Well, my name is Mark Dittmer. I'm an uh, Algebra 2 teacher at American Indian Public High School. Um, this is a video on graphing the cosine function of the type y equals a times cosine of bx. Um, a lot of this material can be found in section 14.1 of our textbook. The, um, the graph that we're looking at is y equals a sine bx, and let's look, we looked at it first with both of those variables equal to 1, which means that it's another way of just saying y equals sine x. This is like the, we would call the parent function, y equals sine x. And we get, it's a, it's a periodic function like this. It repeats every, so like, see how this is not, one, not a whole repetition? If, it, if this was a whole repetition, then it would be all positive, it would be all hills and no valleys. But this function has hills and valleys, so a full cycle has one hill and one valley. So from start to end is the period, and so this period is not pi, but 2 pi. 2 pi is the width of one period, one interval. Now, um, what we saw in our first video is that if I make A bigger, the period does not change, and neither does the midline, only the amplitude changes. See how the amplitude changes without changing the midline, now the amplitude is 2, now the amplitude is 2.45, and so on. Um, amplitude cannot really be negative. Um, well, yeah, amplitude cannot be negative. So the amplitude of this is 1. It's a, the whole function reflects, so the equation y equals negative sine x is the y equals sine x equation just flipped upside down. But the amplitude is always positive. So you would just say, oh, well, look, it's how far is the uh, minimum from the midline? 1. So amplitude is still 1. Um, one way of saying that is that amplitude is always the absolute value of A. So whatever A is, amplitude is positive that. Um, for all the equations that we're looking at this section, the midline is y equals 0. That makes this easier. Uh, certain, certain rules apply. Um, basically, the maximum will be the amplitude, and the minimum will be the, the negative of the amplitude. Um, if, the, if the graph has a different midline, the rules change. But for now, uh, the midline is y equals 0. That means that b changes the frequency, excuse me, the period, Frequency, though, is another aspect of, of period that uh, we'll talk about. Um, one way of looking at it is, um, well, hopefully by now you've already studied how when B gets bigger, the period gets smaller. I just doubled B, and now my function hill, valley, and now it's pi. It was 2 pi, now it's pi, so it shrunk by half. B doubled and the period shrunk by half. To, so what the relationship is then, basically, the period of the sine function is 2 pi over b. So when b doubles, the period shrinks by half. And it follows that if b gets smaller, the period will grow. And sure enough, if b shrinks by half to 0.5, when the period now, I zoom out, is 4 pi, so the period doubles. So it's an inverse relationship between b, so the, the higher b is, the lower the period is. And I mentioned the word frequency. Low period means high frequency. See how basically the thing repeats itself more often in a low period, so it, more frequently, more often, more frequently. So it's actually a sound term. High frequency means it repeats itself more often, more quickly, in a shorter interval. Low frequency, which is a different kind of sound, repeats itself less often. Low frequency, high period. So I'm not going to test you on frequency. Basically, what you, what you would need to know, though, is that B is high. High B means low period, low B means high period. So we don't usually say low period or high period. We say big period or larger period, 
smaller period. Um, so this has all been about sine function, but I don't feel bad about reviewing it in this cosine video because the cosine function is really similar to the sine function. And um, to show you that, let's look at this again. So when we, uh, when we looked at sine, we were looking at red, right? Red gets starts at zero, gets goes to one, then to zero, then to negative one, then to zero. And that's what the red graph does. But at the very same time, all what we were ignoring was the blue graph. We're gonna so now let's start ignoring the ignoring the red and paying attention to the blue, and we'll keep ignoring the green. So the blue, the cosine, starts at one because blue is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the adjacent thing is the blue down here, and it starts at one, and it goes to zero, slowly goes to zero, and then to negative one, and then back to zero, and then to positive one. Um, you could say, like, well, there's there's a few observations that you can make, and maybe pause it and make some observations yourself. What do you notice? What do you wonder when you when you look at the blue, and how is it different from the red, and how is it the same? So, what about its amplitude? Is it ampl is its amplitude different or the same? Well, hopefully you said it's the same. Yeah, it's still one. The amplitude is one. So we look over here, we see that's the that's the maximum, that's the minimum at negative one, po maximum at positive one. Um, what about the midline? Well, midline's the same too. It's y equals zero. And what about the period? It's got a. It doesn't repeat itself until it goes all the way around the circle. All the way around the circle is 360 degrees. 360 degrees is 2 pi radians. So let's plug it in and see what it looks like. Y equals cosine x. All right, I'm going to put these, uh, my sliders, at 1. So you can see cosine x and sine x next to each other. And um, okay, let's get rid of all these boxes. So again, I think it helps when you're graphing these to divide them into sections of four. Because like I said, the unit circle is in sections of four. So the graph is in sections of four. It starts at one, goes to zero, goes to negative one, comes back to zero, goes to one. And so each of those points becomes important on the graph. So you start at one comma zero, or zero comma one, excuse me. That's pi over 2 comma 0, pi comma negative 1, 3 pi over 2 comma 0. So those are like the key points of the cosine function. One thing you might have noticed is that the cosine function seems to trail the sine function. Like they seem to be mirrors of each other. Like they're offset by um, just from here to here. See that offset? So by pi over 2, right? This one's just pi over 2 to the left of the sine function. Cosine function is the sine function moved pi over 2 to the left. So it has all the same characteristics, it's just rotated over some. The sine function starts at 0, it's red, and goes up. and then But then over time, they end up looking the same. The cosine function starts at 1 and goes down and so you can you can think of one being ahead of the other you can think of one being behind the other same um, period same midline same effect when you change a oh how prove it well let's put a in front here and put b right here so a cos bx, so when you change a, both have the periods of both of, excuse me, the amplitudes of both of them change, the periods do not. And same effect when I change b. Um, if b gets bigger, b 
period gets smaller by the same amount. So now the period of this function is pi because b is twice as big as normal. If b is 1, which is the, the, the uh, period of just regular y equals cos x would be 2 pi. Um, I would encourage you to go on desmos.com and play with this. Um, desmos.com slash calculator and play with it yourself and see see if you can, um, I don't know, preview what, what you're going to learn next. Um, but to, you know, to summarize the main details, uh, for again, for cosine, the period is 2 pi over b. The amplitude is the absolute value of a. The midline so far for all the ones we're doing is y equals 0. Um, both functions can be used to model a lot of mathematical situations where um, things repeat themselves over time. And maybe before this video ends, I can give you one example of that. Okay, so this is um, page 835, number 14, 16. It says the motion of a certain pendulum. Got rid of vowels by accident. Um, motion of a certain pendulum can be modeled by the function d equals 4 times the cosine of 8 pi times uh, t. You would you normally use the pi symbol here. The only reason I didn't is because I'm typing on a software that doesn't have it. Um, where d is the pendulum's horizontal displacement, and you can see that here in my little my this beautiful drawing I've done. And t is the time in seconds. So basically, we've got to use these as x and y values, right? And based on what we what we just learned um, about graphing these things, we use this formula. To graph, so it seems like uh, um, it seems like d should be y and t should be x, and that's normal because time is usually graphed on the x-axis. So t t is like x. So a is four, right, and b is eight pi. T is eight pi. Um, so that can give us the uh, the period and the amplitude. Um, now, what are the what does the question ask for? How far horizontally does the pendulum travel from its original position? It's asking for like distance y. It's asking for um, the distance from here to here. Like so, this would be kind of a midline, and this would be kind of a maximum, right? So it's asking for an amplitude. The problem's really asking for an amplitude. So that's easy, right? What's the amplitude? So it's 4. So the answer to this last part is 4. And it's I, I left out, I think it says, um, D is horizontal displacement in inches. So uh, 4 inches is, is the, the, uh, how far it travels horizontally from its original position. The fact that it says horizontally seems to throw us off, but really, we're just model. That's just distance being modeled. It's just it doesn't really affect it, it, what we're doing. They could have said vertically, and then that would have been, you know, just turned the whole picture on its side. So that in that case, horizontal is just a distraction. Um, graphing it, we could, okay. So I'm just going to go and graph t equals four cosine eight pi t. Um, before I actually, before I actually just graph it, why don't I clear my clear my deal and copy this over here? So let's see if we can figure out what the graph would look like. So a cosine graph starts at, how does it start? Starts at one, right? Starts at one and goes down and then comes back up over a period of two pi, right? But our graph, because it has an amplitude of four, is gonna start at four and go down. So I'll show it and then I'm, gonna done, I'm done talking. Hope you enjoyed the video.